Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to my new video. And in this video, we are going to see a new feature introduced by Cloud Watch Logs in last free event. And this feature is about data protection. So, while developers are trying to prevent logging sensitive information these days, um, but sensitive information such as social security number, or credit card details, or email addresses are getting logged and like there was no way for customers to you know detect this information while ingestion in in the cloud watch um, they used to have some manual workflow or they used to depend on some third party uh, solutions to detect and uh, mitigate sensitive data but after this new feature uh, customers will be able to detect and redact sensitive information in CloudWatch itself. So let's take a quick look at the feature and how you can use it. So for that, you'll need a Cloud or AWS account. And I have a special user with some privileges. So I'll talk about this later in the demo. Uh, so let's get started. So as soon as you log in, you have to go to the CloudWatch Logs console. So just click on the services and you'll see, you can type in CWL here in the search, which will take you to CloudWatch console. Uh, so the left side of this uh, screen, you will see there are multiple options. So you need to select logs here and then go to the log groups section. So if, as soon as you click log groups, you will see all the log groups which you have created in the past. And this new feature, you can enable it on the existing log groups as well as the new log groups. So as you can see, I don't have any log group. So first of all, I need to create a log group. So let's create one. Let's name it test sensitive. Data. Uh, let's create it. So as you can see, a new log group is created. But the data protection on this log group is inactive. So first you need to go to that log group. And then you can see data protection section over here. Just click on that. And you can see there is no data protection policy configured. Uh, just click on create policy. And here you can see different type of identifiers. Uh, which you can select as sensitive data. So for example, if you have email address as sensitive information, select email address. Or there are like around 106 PII uh, identifiers here. You can select any of them. You can have multiple identifiers as well. So for example, they can also select IP address. and uh, once you are done with the data identifiers, uh, you have an optional audit destination uh, section, which you know you can use to see what are things were detected. Uh, so, for example, if your uh, log group had email address uh, and you want to have a, a report of that, then you can select CloudWatch logs as the destination and as I don't have it, I'll create another one so that you can see what all things our logs had and the report will be there. So let's create another log group for that.
so it will take you to the log group page let's name it audit lg and let's go back to our uh, data protection section and click on this refresh now you will see audit log group here select that and before you activate if you want to see how the policy looks you can go to this syntax tab and you can see you have two data identifiers email and ip address you have a log group and uh, it will audit as well as redact sensitive information so let's go back to the detail section now and click on activate data protection so data protection policy successfully created now uh, you will see what all things are there in the policy and what is the audit destination now to test this out you have to go back to the log groups and click on test sensitive data and here you can create a log stream where you can send um, events so let's do that let's name it as test stream and let's go to that stream so you'll see there are no log events and now i want to create a new event so i'll click on actions and i'll click on create log event and if you remember we had email address as well as ip address as our sensitive information so let's write a test message my email addresses come to the rescue at gmail.com and my ip addresses 192.168.1.101 and let's see if this is getting redacted So as you can see, this is the message which um, this log group has got, and it has redacted my email address and IP address. Um, but now I want to see the original message. And in this case, I can do that. I have some privileges. I will show you the policy here, but that policy should have something called as un unmask permission. So that unmask permission will give you privilege user uh, access. So now let's, I, I just want to see what the original message was here. So now let's go to the action and, oh no, not in action. Let's go to the display. And there is a, a button called, a drop down called temporary unmask protected data. So if I click on this, you will see what was the original message. But I'm able to see this only because I have some special permissions. And let's see what those permissions are. But before going to the IM role, I want to show you one more thing, like one more uh, place where you can use this. So if you go to Log Insights and you want to see what all uh logs were there in your log group and what was the original message then you just have to uh, select that log group here and along with the fields there is a function called unmask and which takes at message so just select that here and run the query So you can see what the message was. Message is always uh, redacted. And the unmask will give you original message. Now to use this unmask functionality, again, you have to be super user. 
here and I need to create a new policy. I need to choose a service. It's CloudWatch logs. And you can give access permissions here. But I can add manual actions. So if you see, So I have this unmask in the policy. So this is the act in which you need to unmask your uh, log. So if you have this, then you have a privilege access to see what the original log was. So with the admin, you have it by default, but if you want to specifically give this permission, you can add it to your uh, policy and then add that policy to your a user yeah so this is for the policy now let's go back and let's see how we can so for example if, if you have added this uh, data protection you have enabled it and you need to change it again you need to add something else then you have to again go to the same tab and click on actions and edit policy and you can add a new policy here, a new PII data or sensitive uh, data. So you can select this data identifier and save it. Now your new uh, policy will have address as well. And you can also uh, see some metadata regarding your sensitive uh, uh, data which is already detected so you can see that there is there was one log which had sensitive information and there is another uh, place where you can check what was detected so if you remember we had a destination set audit destination so let's go to that log group and see what logs we had So you can see email address was detected and IP address was detected and the count was one for them. And the start and end, it gives you the location in the log. So 20 to 244 was your email address and 67 to 79 was your IP address. You can also use uh, other destinations such as S3 and Genesis file host. Uh, but for this demo, I am keeping it short and just using uh, CloudWatch logs destination. Now that we have seen um, privileged user and uh, how privileged user can see uh, original data, now let's see how a normal user without uh, unmasked permission uh, can see this original data or if, if the normal user is able to see it or not. So let's log in with a different user. The user is having only read-only permission. And again, let's go back to CloudWatch logs. So this was our log group. Uh, let's get in and look at the logs. So you can see uh, this was the log message which we used earlier. And let's try to unmask it. Remember this uh, user doesn't have unmasked uh, permission. So this I'm expecting this to fail. Let's see what happens. So it says you don't have permission required to unmask protected data. So it was expected this user was not having unmasked uh, in their policy. 
which is attached attached to the user. Now let's try to unmask it using inside query. Let's see if this works. It says access denied. Is not authorized to perform unmask on resource this because no identity based policy allows logs unmask action. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you everyone for watching this video. And if you learned something from this video, please click on the like button. And if you have any questions, you can comment in the comment section below and uh, subscribe to get more content. Thank you.